Right now, there are storms raging right now all over this world. Baton Rouge, Louisiana, California, Haiti, you name it, it's going to happen. But yet, remember, who's in control? My God is in control. It says he's the protector, right? And if he is the protector, then I ain't got to worry. Why? Because my sights are on the Lord. I look to the hill from what? Where my health comes from. Come on, say it, church. He is a health in a very what? Present time. Today, he said this, the Lord God is a sun shield. He's shielding me from the storms, from all the things that's happening around us, the dimensions that we go through. God is shielding us. He's still on the throne. He gives grace and glory to those who serve him and those who believe in him, according to Psalms 84:11. Because we are in realm and in alignment with him, there is safety and protection. And because I have that safety and protection, I can raise my hands to him. I can sing songs to him. I can say he's God all by himself this morning because he has my best interest at heart. He said to Moses in Exodus, he said, I will do this great thing that you have spoken. How many are speaking things this morning over their lives, over their families? How many are speaking those things not as though they were, but those things that we need to be speaking? How many are speaking those things to cast down the strongholds? How many are speaking help over their lives today in the precious name of Jesus? How many are speaking kingdom mindedness today? How many are out there today? Those who are listening over the internet, those who are listening by, uh, by radio, whatever it is that you're listening by, we got to speak the right things. We got to say the right thing. Then we have to see it through the eyes of faith this morning. And today, through our praise and worship, something's going to be turned around. So something's going to be turned around. I don't know about you, but God is a God of turnaround. And because he is a God who is constantly working on me, say, I'm under construction, Lord. I'm under construction. I'm not there yet. I'm not there. But guess what? I'm going to get there with him. I'm not going to move forward ahead of him or in back of him. I'm going to move with him. And he says this in closing. He says, you have granted me life and favor and you have cared and preserved my spirit. Now, if that doesn't tell us something, I don't know what it's going to take. I know that once he preserves us, that means it's already set in stone already. I ain't got to worry about it, right, Minister Perry? I ain't got to worry about it. If he said it, then he meant it. And today, if God is for me, then who can be against us this morning? Today, come on, praise team. Let's bring it up and lift it up to a higher height this morning. We invite you to join into our worship this morning. We invite you to praise him with us. We invite you to lift up the name of Jesus just because he's God all by himself and he don't need nobody else. But guess what? When we join in, guess what? Heaven is joining in with us this morning. So let's join in with heaven this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Come on. We pray that you'll be able to sing with us this morning. We know you will. We're going to bless the Lord this morning. Hey, bless the Lord. Oh, mighty one. Bless the Lord. you his angels and let all the earth sing forth his praises come on and bless him say come on come on and bless him come on and praise his name come on come on and bless him i know you want to get up
Elohim, he is still Adonai. He is still our Father. No matter what man says is going on right now. See, they had these type of situations in the Old Testament. And here we are standing today. What does that say? God is a miracle worker and he still takes care of his people. And I need you to take this moment to just clear everything out your mind. This is a time with you and your father. If you want to raise your hands and bow your head, this is the most precious sacred time right now. Oh God, you are here.
We especially thank you for being able to gather in your house to worship you. We're so thankful that our governor is still allowing us to gather. And Lord, every opportunity that we have, we're going to gather in your name. But we also thank you for the opportunity, the day and age that we live, where we can watch on the internet, over Facebook and YouTube. We're so thankful for you. So whatever avenue, whatever uh, method that you use this morning for us to hear the reminder, even when we don't see it or feel it, you're still working because your word is true and you're not man that you should lie. We're so thankful, oh God. We're thankful in this country to be able to worship you freely in spirit and in truth. We don't take it for granted, Lord. We thank you that we can come into your house safely, that we can listen on the internet safely. We don't have to hide in a basement. We don't have to hide in a basement, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We just give you praise. You said enter your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. Be thankful unto you. So we're thankful this morning. We thank you and we give you praise. Now, Lord, we present our request to you of healing. We pray for those that are challenged physically. Pastor Greg, Minister Greg, we thank you for touching his body right now, bringing healing and prepping him for the, the days ahead. Keep him encouraged. Keep Deaconess Daniela encouraged. Strengthen them right now. You're, no weapon formed against them shall prosper, and you're with them always. Even they don't, they'll, even though we don't see it, they may not feel it, but you're working anyhow. You're bringing healing and restoration. We pray for those that are challenged in their minds and in their thoughts. We command the spirit of discouragement. We command the spirit of oppression to leave right now. And especially that suicide spirit. We command you to go right now in the name of Jesus. You must bow spirit in the name of Jesus. We speak joy. We speak peace, we speak encouragement, we speak victory in your name because there is power in the name of Jesus and demons must flee. Now, Lord, we pray for our fellow brothers and sisters in other countries in Pakistan. We lift up our American uh, uh, citizens and, and those Christians that are in Afghanistan. We just lift up the nation to you right now, but especially those that are believers. We ask you to encourage their hearts bring a shield of protection around them those that are in the military that are assisting them keep them safe oh god will not stop praying until we see the manifestation of your word we lift up those families that have lost uh, the young soldiers that were uh killed in the attack lord we pray for their families right now and lord we ask you to give every mother every father strength every sibling strength right now every co-worker that lost that loved one we thank you lord that you are with them you're with those and you comfort those that are mourning lord those that have had COVID, we pray your healing upon them and those that have been lost we pray for the the families right now in the name of jesus that you would encourage them we pray a hedge of protection around our country oh god we ask you to protect us in the name of jesus and lord we humble ourselves before you and we seek your face and you said when we do that you would hear us and you would heal our land we need healing in our land oh god we need your forgiveness and we repent right now on behalf of our brothers and sisters. Would you raise your hands in repentance? Lord, we repent right now. We ask your forgiveness right now. Sins of commission, sins of omission, sins we, we, we didn't know we were committing. We ask your forgiveness in the name of Jesus. You said you would draw nigh to us as we draw nigh to you. So we thank you for your forgiveness and your everlasting love. We give you praise and honor in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Hallelujah. He never stopped working. All right, now let's give him a shout out. Like we're on the winning team. Come on, let's hear the drums. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're working. You're working and we will not give up until we see the manifestation of your word. Thank you, Lord. We are fans. We're your number one fans. Are you number one fan for Jesus? He said the rocks will cry out. <laughs> no rocks gonna cry out for me. I don't need these chairs to start 
yelling for me. I will all be running out of here. The chairs start yelling. So give them a shout out one more time. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name, Lord. Bless your name. You may be seated in the house. Thank you for joining us in this celebration. We're on the winning football team, the winning volleyball team, the winning baseball team. Amen? I see Minister Tim back there and say, yeah, yeah, I never played a sport, but I'm on a, a winning team. Amen? Are you on winning teams? The one team, the Jesus only team. <laughs> Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, all in one. Thank you, Lord. All right. Great to have Pastor Michelle Terrell back in the house, only here with us for another week. But we missed her birthday when she was gone. She took her nephew to uh, camp, but we want to honor her as our first birthday person. We didn't get a chance to honor you in July. Would you come down, Pastor Michelle Terrell, wonderful youth leader. God bless you. Give her a great big hand. Yay, Pastor Michelle, happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday to you. So we never forget you and your birthday. Hope you enjoy your gifts. Happy birthday. It was in July. You can stay up front. This is your day. Come on, give her a great big hand. God bless you, Pastor Michelle. And we wish you many more. Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay. All right. Now we're going to celebrate our August birthday baby's first one born, at least in the month of August. We have Minister Pat Gray. Come on down. Minister Pat, born on August 6th, happy birthday to you. Yay! God bless you. Thank you for all you do in the ministry. We appreciate what you do. God bless you. May you have many, many more birthdays. God bless you. All right. Uh, she's not here, but we want to acknowledge Grandma, great-grandma Gwen, who was born on August 10th, our internet member. Amen. And a mother, like a mother to Bishop and myself as well. Give her a great big hand. Mother Gwen Terry, she's spoken at our Mother's Summit, a true mother in the Lord. All right. Another senior, Brother Perry Ford was born on August 12th. Give him a great big hand. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. All right. You can social distance. And we have a lay for you and a gift for you. God bless you, Brother Perry Ford. How are you? How old are you now? 73. Give it up for our 73-year-old. Looking good. God bless you. Looking good. Um, on August 19th at 7.50 in the morning, uh, um, Kelsey Lewis II was born. But Kelsey Lewis II, he's out of town. He's on a, a project for us and working. He's our operations manager. He also works in the accounting department here at PRC. So we'll celebrate his birthday next month. But we do have a gift for him that we can take to him. So let's give it up for Kelsey Lewis II. And he keeps reminding me that he is 24 years old. Those of you that know him since he was 14, 13, 7, he's 24 years old. He is a fully adult. <laughs> All right, the other person that's not here is Minister uh, Janelle Tucson, born on August 20th. Let's give her a great big hand. Yay, Janelle. In your absence, we have a gift for you. And do we have someone that wants to represent Minister Janelle? Or we'll give it to her next month, okay? We want her to have her day. Thank you, Minister Janelle. So faithful, uh, great worker in the Lord. All right. Another person born on August 20th. You still have to come down, John. You may have to bring the guitar with you. John Banquo, come on down. God bless you, John. Happy birthday to you, our music minister doing a great job awesome 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 we want to celebrate with you come on down you're 25 is that right happy birthday to john and we can credit john for you know designing our stage our lighting uh making our internet 
sound better and better all the time during the media. He's over our media. We love you, John. God bless you. Awesome. And one more person I did miss right in front of me, Harold Nelson. Come on, Mom. You got the mic. You can scream it up. Come on down, Harold. Fine, young man. He's on our camera. See, we put you to work. Amen? How old are you, Harold? 17. 17. <laughs> 17 years ago, you remember the day. Amen? Us mothers never forget. That's one thing when you're a mom, you do not forget. <laughs> you may forget the day, exactly, the date, but you never forget the moment. Amen? Can mothers say amen? We have one anniversary that we had in the month of August, August 10th. We have Logan and Felicia Colburn. Would you come on down? God bless you. Happy anniversary to our beautiful new couple here at PRC. God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. God bless you. Now we're going to have Pastor Jason, who is going to come and represent the ministry in honoring our bishop for his birthday. As Pastor just mentioned, we are here to... You know, we did honor, you know, other birthday individuals, but we also have our bishop who also carries the vision of this church and of this house. The man of God who here so that he can take from God and also feed us good things, you know. So the thing that bishop is feeding us is not just something that he just thought of, you know, by the way, or he's talking out of the side of his neck. But these things he are actually hearing from God and his things see that he is scattering amongst us. That when it comes up, remember where your blessings came from. Yes, they came from God, but remember God has used Bishop to bless our lives. Amen. You know, and Bishop, I would like to say that you have sown many seeds. Some seeds we see come up right away. There are some seeds that you will see in your lifetime, but there are seeds that you have sown that will bless generations to come. Amen. And Amen. I know that God has Amen. given you those seeds. So. <laughs> So God has blessed you and he'll continue to bless you to eat the fruit from what you have sown. But yes, you have sown much and it's gonna be a blessing and others will continue to eat the fruit from the vision that you have placed here in this earth, yes. So we do have gifts from various ministries. These gifts, they don't speak of much, you know. It's just a token to show that we do appreciate you. Amen. That we love you. Amen. You know. Amen. Sometimes gifts just can't say enough. Sometimes gifts can I say enough corn and you can come on ground. You can hand it to him and then This is take something it back I believe you'll enjoy. Oh, <laughs> uh, not quite, but but it's, it's gonna help you <laughs> along the way. <laughs> and then also, I would like to say, Bishop, like I say, there's many things that many testimonies that everyone can have and that they probably do have, you know. <laughs> but one that I cherish the most. One that I cherish the most is that Bishop Lewis, you guys must understand the care and the love that he has, not just for the body, but for the people, the heart that him and um, Pastor also share for the people. You see, you know, I know you guys heard bits and pieces of the testimonies that, that I have about me and my family, but one of the, again, one of the, again, one of the ones that I cherish the most, it was Bishop you know, when talking to him, we were trying to find a place to live, but he, yeah, you, you don't remember this? <laughs> so it's funny because God had already given the dream, but I didn't know where the house was. And shortly after Bishop, it was me, you and Brian, we got in the car and we actually drove over to Kaliloa that day. <laughs> And he dropped me over. I didn't know Kali Loa. We didn't know, you know. But he dropped me off. He said, hey, go pick up an application there. So wow. not knowing. So I just picked up the application. I took it to Daisy. Said, hey, Daisy, blah, blah, blah. Picked up this application. Don't you know it that after seven months in the hotel, we filled out that application, turned it in on the weekend. They said they would get back to us Monday. They called us on Sunday, wow. not Monday, and said, hey, you guys can move in, right? But the blessing about that is this God confirmed through Bishop what he was doing. Because in the dream, God told me it'll be after the 20th of the month. Well, it was after the 20th of the month. I believe it was the 21st, I believe, which was that Sunday in December. So I know that God speaks with Bishop. And I know that God has a plan for him. But if he has a plan for him, 
He has a plan for each and every one of us. And all of us have been eating the food and the fruit from Pacific Revival Center. So let's get out and tell others about the goodness that God is doing here at Pacific Revival Center. Stop getting fat off the seed and the word that Bishop is showing and start sharing also. Amen. Yes. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, for blessing these that are standing here before you, before the altar, Lord God. In Jesus' name, for giving them strength, Father, to, to praise you and, and to worship you, but blessing them, Father, to see another year, another day in you, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father. For you have granted them these years, and you have brought them this far, but dear God, in the name of Jesus, Father, continue to bless them to see many more years and continue to reveal your purpose within them, Father. But also, Lord, continue to bless, Father, Bishop Lewis, in Jesus' name, as he continues to lead in the forefront in the name of Jesus, Father. Give him strength in his days in Jesus name for the things that are coming up father in Jesus name so that he may see the goodness of you Lord here in the land of the living father continue to bless him with many more years in Jesus name that he may continue father to dwell under your grace father and under your spirit father and I thank you that your mercies are also new every morning father for his life and also our lives in the name of Jesus father we thank you father for that in the mighty name of Jesus father I pray amen and amen I know, I know, you know, it was just a birthday celebration. Yes, we all want cake, you know. <laughs> we'll have a chance for cake later, you know. <laughs> but right now, um, how many joyful tithers and givers do we have in the house of God this morning? Give God praise, give him honor, give him glory. Because, <laughs> you know, God, you know, he is so faithful and he continues to be faithful all throughout the days of our lives. And you know, sometimes we don't recognize and realize because we're so focused on the things that we're going through or, you know, what we do not have or, or what we don't have enough of. And that tends to be our focus and it takes our focus off of God. And all along, God has taken care of you and all along he's provided for you. He has continued to feed you. He has continued to clothe you. He has continued to give you shelter. Those are things that the book of uh, Matthew speaks of that the Gentiles think about those things. But the Lord goes on to say, to seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first. Now, we understand first because when is rent due? On the first. I know pay, pay days, well, first and 15. I know some is 10th and 12th, but you know, but we get first. But seems like we get a little gray area when it comes to God. Like, well, let me just have a bite of the burger first. I just want to make sure that it's right, you know. But, you know... <laughs> First is first, you know. First place is first place. It's not second place. You see, when we give and when we tithe, we're just giving a portion to God of what is his. We understand that it's all his anyway. But the thing about it, we think about the 90% and we say that the 90% is ours, right? Well, it's still his. Think about it as management. How are you managing what God has given you? Can you manage the 10%? And if you manage the 10%, can you manage the 90? Because there are some good things that God has for you. Some great things that you don't understand. I was sharing with Bishop maybe two weeks ago. I don't know if you guys remember that message he preached at the end of the year or the beginning. I want to say it was at the end or it was right at the beginning. He said, what is your impossible prayer for 2021? What is your impossible prayer? And he pulled a few people up. What's your impossible prayer? I had to think about that. Lord, what is my impossible prayer? See, my impossible prayer to God, I remember driving to work. It takes me about 30, 35 minutes to get to town. <laughs> if you drive the speed limit. <laughs> but I'm there driving. I'm like, hey, God, this is my impossible prayer. Because, you know, for a while, my wife and I desired to go into business, right? You know, but we just need to get started, you know. But I'm like, Lord, we, we just need to get started. And, you know, even if I get started, you know, when you start researching, you know, people say, man, it took this long to do this and this long to do that. And like, man, you know, it took me two years to do my business plan. And like, man, OK, OK, Lord, you know what? This is my impossible prayer, Lord, to you. I said, Lord, 2021, let us just get started. Just get started before this year is over. I don't know how you're going to do it, but you're a God of impossibilities. I don't know how you do it, but I know that you can do it. You're the one that can make a way and make this happen, dear God. I don't know. 
but Lord, I'm trusting you. But my impossible prayer to you is that we open for business and we get, get it done. You know, I'm talking not under the table. I'm talking legitimately, right? Something that we can register. So God put it in my heart. Okay, go ahead and start getting everything registered. Okay, that was the easy part. Okay, God, we got the business name. We got the, we got, you know, the tax license. Okay. All right, now what, God? <laughs> and so we go along. And now we like, okay, well, God, we, we still need a commercial space. But then we still need to find a venue. We, we don't have a venue yet, Lord. Like a place <laughs> that, you know, where we can just operate. And then one day Bishop, after church, was talking to Daisy about us selling some stuff here for I trampoline, you know. Just, you know, not knowing what this conversation I had with God. And I didn't even tell my wife about this prayer. <laughs> and she's telling me, I'm like, okay, God, I, I, I kind of see where you're going. But okay, let's just, you know, keep being faithful. So then it pushes you along, right? So now I need business insurance, right? Right? I got, I got to get that taken care of, right? Now I, I got to, you know, hurry up and get this, you know, commercial kitchen, get all these licenses agreement, get certified with the health department. Everything that I didn't know how to do at the beginning of the year, by the time Bishop talked to Daisy, now I got to get it done. And now we fast forward to September 6th. <laughs> September 6th is the first day <laughs> for my Ohana's barbecue. <laughs> to serve here at I Trampoline. Don't tell me that God is not a God of impossibilities. God took something that I thought was so great and he made it so small because he said, I know somebody. <laughs> you might know them, but I, I know somebody that can help you. And you know, they love your food, so they're, they're going to help you out, <laughs> okay? <laughs> But is God not, is he not good? In the goodness of God, we are promised to see that here in the land of the living. And Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for your goodness, Father, and your mercy. But I'll just close with this scripture. To bring all the tithes into the storehouse. That means withholding nothing. 10% is 10% that there may be food in my house. We have a vision to accomplish. The food is the word of God. We have to get it sent out. We send it through uh, Facebook and we send it through YouTube, and um, I'm probably missing some stuff. I'm not really uh, social media savvy. <laughs> but we are using it <laughs> to send the word out, but we're also still sending out armies of believers to minister the word of God. And the Lord says to try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there would not be room enough to receive it. You ever think about how many windows you have to go through? Thank God there's only two drive through windows. One you pay at, one you pick up your food. But if you had to pick up your food at one and a drink at another and then this at another, you're not going to want to do that because by the time you get there, you know, you done drank your drink, you done ate your fries, and now your burger's cold, right? But no, but see, the windows of heaven, there's so many windows of heaven. And then God says, hey, this is all you can handle right now, but I'm still going to increase you. Let's go to the next window. You go to the next window. It may not look like enough right now, but as you go little by little, God's going to increase you until you have increased little by little. So be faithful with what he got, because you know what? He's out to bless you. All right, so I'm going to leave it right there because Bishop is preaching today, not me. So, okay. <laughs> so we're going to stand and say our business statement in just a second, but I'm going to, um, I do apologize. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm going to pray over the offering and then we're going to stand and say the vision statement. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord God, for the seed that you have given us, Father, and causing us to be faithful for what you have given us, Father. The seed that you have given us, Father, I know, Lord, we're going to sow it, Lord, because it's not for right now, but Lord, it's for a future time. But we thank you for the seed that we have continued to sow, Father, in Jesus' name, and how it keeps coming up year after year, day by day, Father, to bless us that when we get there, Father, the provision is already there, Father. Thank you for being so intentional and purposeful, Lord, in Jesus' name, in our lives, Father. We thank you, Lord, for the vision being supported in this house and in the houses here, in this ministry and in this place, in Jesus' name, Father. For the armies of believers, Father, I thank you, Lord, they are supported in the name of Jesus, Father. I thank you, Lord, for causing us to equip them, Father, for the work of the ministry. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Now let's please stand and say the vision statement. Let us all be partakers. It's right up here on the uh, project, projector. Yes, projector. I always want to say overhead. I don't know why. Okay, I'm already back to third grade in my head. Um, all right, so God has given Pacific Revival Center a mandate to train and equip and to send out armies of believers to minister the gospel to all nations. He has anointed and qualified us to preach the good news, to bind up and heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the physical and spiritual captives, 
and open the prison doors and eyes of those who are bound. He has sent us to comfort all who mourn, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And we shall be called priests of the Lord and shall be named ministers of our God. And our descendants shall be known among the nations and our offsprings among the people. And all who see them will know that we are people whom the Lord has blessed. Please follow the directions of the ushers. Come on, let's do our confession statement. Come on, say it's my time. It's my time, it's my time for salvation. It's my time for, salvation. It's my time for healing. It's my time for, it's my time for blessing. It's my time for change. No weapon can stop me. No weapon can prosper. I'm superior to the forces of darkness. It's my appointed time. It's my set time. It's manifestation time. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at somebody and say, I'm ready. I'm ready. I am ready. Hallelujah. You may be dismissed. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm ready for what my, my spirit is ready. My spirit is ready. Uh, 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 the, what's holding us back is some natural things. COVID-19 is holding us back. I'm ready to get on television again. I'm ready to get back to our vision of Pacific Revival Center. Amen? We're still raising up ministers of the gospel. We're raising them up. Leadership we're raising up. Amen? You know, uh, Dr. George and Hazel said, we're a leadership ministry, and we are, because I look at the people that are attracted to our ministry, all leaders in their different fields, moving up at different levels, amen? Some young, some older, amen? Leadership. I, I'm ready to get back to our revival. The Lord told me years ago, revival through conference, evangelism through television. And as I talked to the Victory Church's USA leaders, they said, when are we going to have our next revival? And they want to do a Zoom revival. I said, no, we're going to wait till we can do it in person. We're going to wait till we can get everybody together. Just last week we had um, Michael Winans here and his wife, Regina Winans, and that just reminded me even more of what our calling is. Revival, right? Pacific Revival Center. See, I'm ready to do it, and in my spirit, I'm ready. In my spirit, I'm ready. How about you? But I still got to wait on God. <laughs> in my spirit, I'm ready to go. In my spirit, I'm ready to go. Even in my flesh, I've gotten, I've gotten it ready. I can't wait till we do another Mother's Summit. I can't wait to have another. That's something that's important to us. Most churches, and the, the biggest thing all through the 90s, the, 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 the uh, 2000s, the 90s, were women's conference, Right? I was a pastor dresser. said, we should do Mother's Summit. Mothers are very important, aren't they? That's, that's, that's our targeted purpose. I like what Pastor Drew, what the, the, the theme of the Mother's uh, Conference was, where you said, uh, what's the word? High level? She defined a mother. Let's see if y'all agree. Amen. So the summit portion summit. is high-ranking officials. Whenever there is a summit, it's a gathering of high-ranking officials. A gathering of high-ranking officials. We got any high-ranking officials in the room? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. We got any mothers in the room? Can't wait to do that next year. Amen? Can't wait to do that next year. We look forward to uh, another um, uh, um, uh, uh, conference the Lord has already told me to have for the last couple of years is bring back everyone that we ordained. Bring back everyone that we didn't have. Just have a conference full of them and let them preach. Let them tell us what, we, what they've been doing, what they've done with what God has given them. Amen? Let me ask you a question today. What have you done with what God has given you? Amen? Turn with me to the book of Acts, and I got a scripture I want to read to you. I was watching a documentary. How many was watching the documentary this week on uh, the, the life of Supreme Court Justice uh, Clarence Thomas? How many of you watched it? I'm the only one that watched. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> y'all don't watch what I watch on television, do y'all? <laughs> and in watching it, at the end of it, one of his closest uh, associates was telling, clerks was tell, talking about how he, his greatest influence, I want you to get this now, and he was talking about his greatest influence, the one who had the greatest influence 
on his life was his grandfather. Was his grandfather. If you'd asked me years ago who had the greatest influence on my I might have said my mother. Uh, at certain times, I'm going to tell you, some of my uncles did it, but they had a great influence on me. But I had to break that influence. I had to break that influence and get out from under it. Amen? Uh, but now if you ask me that, the greatest influence in my life is Jesus Christ. It's Jesus Christ. Over the last 30 years, he's been the greatest influence in my life. He's put some people in my life to help me, to bless me, to teach me, to guide me, to correct me. But he's the greatest influence. I, I looked at what he said at the end of the show, of the program. It says, at the end of the program, at, of, of the presentation, it says, he said that when all is said and done, he'll look, he'll look he's looking forward to see, he's looking forward to seeing his grandfather in heaven. And hearing his grandfather say, well done. Immediately, I said, there's something, there's something wrong with that. Something wrong with that. Something wrong with you want to go to heaven so you can hear your grandfather, your mother. It'll be great to see them. It will be great to see them, but there's only one person in heaven that can say, well done. And that's Jesus. Anyone else saying, well, if it's an angel, if it's Michael, the great archangel, the great warrior spirit, saying, well done, you fought a good fight, it means nothing. It means nothing. That, that kind of blew me away when he said that. I said, do you really know the Bible? When you're looking forward to your grandfather saying, well done? And not Jesus. That's the only one. Jesus said, he says, when you come into heaven, can somebody turn this fan off for me? When you get into heaven and get before the Lord, he's going to say either one or two things to you. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the promise of God. Or he's going to say, depart for me. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. Depart from me. I got a little bullet up there for you by Socrates that says, let him that would move the world first move himself. Isn't that powerful? Let him that would move the world first, look at somebody and say, you got to get up and do something. I like what um, Dr. Robert Shuler used to say, don't just sit there, do something. Do something with what God has given you. I'm going to get into that here a little bit in this today, amen? Dimensions, I titled this message Dimensions. The dimensions of God's goodness. God is good. Dimensions, God's goodness is poured out. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 17, verse 28, in him we live. In him we live and move. In him we live and move and have our be In God I live. Are you living for Christ? In God I live. In God I move. Uh, uh, we don't do things. We're, we're, my spirit's ready. But God hasn't told us to move yet. God hasn't given us the resources to move yet. God hasn't ordained for us to move yet. We want to move. We want to get back. I'm praying right now, Lord, put us back on television locally here. We can reach the world on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, all of that, but locally here, it's, st it's still people that watch television. Raise your hand if you watch television. Let me see anybody in here who watch television. I mean, honestly, not, not one person under 20, under, uh, under, <laughs> under 25, <laughs> raised their hand. Well, we got one. We got one. <laughs> You see why we have to be online on Instagram and YouTube and all that? Because television is going away. <laughs> only us, we're the only ones watching television, amen? We're the only ones watching it. And so everyone else get their stuff online, so we need to be there. But we need to be on television also, amen? Because the Lord has ordained that for us. In him we live and move and have our being. Do you have your being in Christ? Paul says this, it says, 
as certain as one of your own poets have said, for we are his offspring. Are you God's offspring? Verse 29 says, for as, for as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is un like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's devices. Verse 30 says, and the times of this ignorance, God winked at. He winked at the times when men were creating their own gods. But now commanded all men everywhere to repent. It's time for repentance. Because he has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he have ordained, whereof he have given assurance unto all men that, in, that he raised him from the dead. Jesus, talking about Jesus. There's coming a day. Look at somebody say, there's coming a day. There's coming a day. Look at somebody else say, your day is coming. You're, are you ready for it? There's a song we sing, Jesus getting us ready for that great day, amen? Your day is coming. My day is coming. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about dimensions today. The dimensions we live in places us in direct connection with Jesus Christ. Isn't that something? The dimension we live in right now, you know, in the old, oh, oh, the old saints used to call it dispensations. But the dimensions we live in, you know, physicists like the string theory, physicists like to call it dimensions. They say we have 10 dimensions. There's some that say we have 26 dimensions, but you'll see today we only have 10. And here's the thing that gets me about that. They just discovered over the last 30, 40 years that we have 10 dimensions. In the Bible, uh, Mamonides, the, the Hebrew scholar back in the 13th century, in reading the book of Genesis says there are 10 dimensions. Four can be known. And the other six, you cannot be, they cannot be known. You can't perceive them. I'm going to talk to you about a little bit of them today. You see it over in the book of Hebrews also. Hebrews says we have ten dimensions. But there are only four of them that we, that we can know, that man can know. I can be assured of four of them. Amen? Four. The dimensions that we live in places us in direct connection with Christ. You can put the next one up. The, the direct connection with Jesus Christ. Think about that. Ten dimensions. We are, if you want to look at the dimensions, I got them up here. The first four, right? I'm not going to go through all of them because I don't want to bore you. But the first one is length, width, height. And the fourth one is time. Think about that, length. When we say length, if they say a person living only in one, that's the first dimension, in one dimension, he can either go forward or backwards on a straight line. Look at somebody say, you can either go forward Let's, let's make it personal. Tell somebody, say, you can either go forward with God or you can turn and go back. That's one dimension. That's one dimension. One straight line, one point. Either go forward or go backwards. Uh, the second dimension is with, with, is with or death, right? With, right? You can go forward, you can go back, or you can turn. The Bible says turn from your wicked ways. You can turn and go a different direction, Amen? And then the next dimension is height. How, if I ask all the people in the building today, how high are you willing to go with God? How high are you willing to go? Will you just be satisfied? There was a time in my life where I was living a rough and crazy life, and I would wake up on Monday mornings after every, or Sunday mornings after, and think about all the crazy death stuff I did on Friday and Saturday, and say, Lord, just let me make it into heaven. I just wanted fire insurance. Lord, just don't let me go to hell. And I'm thinking in my mind all the crazy stuff I did. How high are you willing to go with Christ? And then when I started really, I, I, I just finally broke down and gave my life to God. I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to serve you. But just give me an easy, simple life. I'll just take an easy, just give me a car, car and a a nice family, a good garage and everything to put it in. And the Lord says, Kelsey, when you was in the world, you wanted to do crazy. You wanted to do every wild thing you could do. And now you want to serve me and you don't want to do nothing. 
He said, it's not going to be that way. It's not going to be that way. How high are you willing to go with God? Amen? How high are you willing to go with God? Those are the dimensions that God has put us in as human beings, right? We live in those dimensions. And the fourth dimension, see, we can control the first dimension. We can control the second dimension. I have physical control over that. We can control the third dimension. But the fourth dimension, they say it's time. We can't control that. We live in it. Look at somebody say, we live in the fourth dimension. But we can't control it. How many of you would just love to be able to go? How many of you think you, sometimes you think you can control time, am I right? Time. And then the fifth dimension, physicists say, would be just unimaginable to us. It's hard to imagine someone living in the fifth dimension and what they could do, right? Look at, look at, what's the difference between depth and height? Let me give you a definition of that. Depth determines, you only use depth when you're measuring how far down you're going. You use the word height when you're measuring how high you're going. Which would you rather be measuring? How high you're going? Or how, let me, let me make it spiritual for you. Wouldn't you rather measure how high you're going to go in heaven? Because you know the Bible says we're going to get some rewards when we get up there, right? Wouldn't you rather be measuring your life on how high you're going to reach into heaven? Or would you rather measure your life on how far are you going to be down in hell? How far are you, I'm going to get, I'm going to hit bottom. You know, the Bible says there's levels down in hell also. Amen? Which one would you rather measure? Amen? Death is always measured in the downward direction. Whereas height is always measured in the upward direction. How low can you go? Or what heights will you... Everyone ask yourself this question right now. What heights will you achieve as a family to a new couple here that's just had their fourth anniversary? What heights will you achieve as a family? I tell every married couple, set goals for your family. Set goals, five years, five years. This is what we want to achieve for our children in the next five years. It works. Ben Franklin said, without a plan, plan to fail. Without a plan, plan to fail. Now, when you set those goals and lay down the plan, you give God something to work with. You also give Satan something to battle you against. But you give God something to work with. Amen? Set goals. How low can you go? Or what heights will you achieve? And then time. That's the one we don't like, time. How long will it take? <laughs> How long will it take? Amen? Look at somebody say, you got enough time to do everything God wants you to do. Amen? Time is, is, is the only dimension, the fourth dimension, we can't control that. As we'll see later today, today, the Lord wants us to know his goodness from all points of view. God wants me to know his goodness from all points of view. Whether it's one dimension, you know, you know some one dimensional people, don't you? Let me give you an example of a one dimensional person. Your supervisor at work and you hire an employee, and every time you ask them to do something new, I don't know how to do that. You didn't hire me for that. I can't do that. One, um, I'll give you a good example. Well, I used to have my Bible study before I became a minister, before I even got married. I used to have a Bible study in my home, and one of my um, guys that sang in the choir with me at the church I was attending here, he, he would come to the Bible study, and we prayed for He said, I want to be the head teller at the bank I'm working in. I've been working there for years. I want to get promoted to the head teller, and the position's coming open. And we prayed for six months for him to, every Bible study was praying for him to get that position, and he got the position. They made him the head teller. But he didn't know they was going to ask him to train other tellers. And they asked him to start training the other tellers, and he got upset about it. He wanted to be the head teller 
but still do his own same old job he's been doing. I mean, no, that's one dimension, isn't it? He didn't want to. I got to train other people. Why well, I'm training them? They might take my job. You're the head teller. This bank has hundreds of tellers around the state, and they want you to be the head teller, and you train all the other tellers. Oh, no, no, no. I didn't know they was going to give me all that responsibility. That's one dimension, though, isn't it? You ask for something that you're not even ready to, no, take that back, that you're ready to handle, but you don't want to handle. You don't know how to change, amen? Look at somebody say, it's my time. It's my time for change. Amen? That's been one dimension. Think about that. God wants us to know his goodness from every point of view, from every circumstance we might face, from everything that happens in our life, he wants me to know his goodness through it. Amen? But in order to do that, I got to see the way God sees. As we'll see later, later today, we're going to get into that a little more. We see three things. We see things in three. That's why we're three-dimensional. We see things in three uh, 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 or twos, threes or twos, two piece, a piece of paper, this piece of this clipboard, it's two dimension. Although it is got some thickness to it, we say it's only two dimensions, right? But then we can see three, when, when I look at you, I see a three dimensional object. I see a three dimensional object as I walk around you, think about that. But it's still, even though the paper is thin or this clipboard is thin, it's still, a, it's still three dimensions. God designed us that way. We function well in the dimensions that God has put us in. And think about that. With all the time, trouble times we've had in Hawaii, me and my wife, we still function well in it because God put us here. If God puts you there, you'll function well in the dimension that he puts you in. Think about that. You'll function well. You'll go through. You'll get to the point in your life where you'll start going through with joy. He tells us to do that, doesn't he? When the diverse trials comes up on you, he says, count it all joy. I only, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I only want to count it all joy one time. I, how, how, how long I got counted? One. Okay, is, is, it, is it finished? <laughs> how many of you think that? No, two. <laughs> how many, how, how, Mr. Perry, uh, uh, Perry, how many times have you ever counted joy? A lot, huh? You, minister, how many times? Quite a few, quite a few. Pastor Drew, Deacon Emmett. Anybody else had to count a joy? Because you was going through something and said, why am I going through this? Why me? Because God put you there. Because God put you there. You function well in a three-dimensional world, amen? You function well in it. We function well in that because he designed us to that. We function well in the dimensions that we live in. God ordained us so. And although we can't control the fourth dimension, we imagine what we would do if we had more of it, don't we? Although we can't control time, we sit around and imagine what we would do if we had more time, amen? If we had more of it. Think about that. When I say we function well in three dimensions we live in, what I mean is, look at what mankind has done with what God has given him, the planet Earth. Look at it. He says, I put you here to dress and, and tend the garden. Look what man has, look, look what man has accomplished and had built with this, with this planet. And, what, what, and the elements that God has placed in this planet. Look at what he's, uh, I, I want to ask you, what have you done with what God has given you? Amen? We're called to occupy. How well are you occupying? Jesus said, occupy till I come. How well are you occupying? As I said, the fifth dimension is unimaginable. I like that one. It's unimaginable. The fifth dimension, look, let me talk to you a little bit about, about the fifth dimension. And we're going to see some things today in Revelations, right? It says, the fifth, fifth dimension, at, at least is what the, fifth, what, let me tell you what the physicists say about the fifth dimension. 
They said it's un we can't perceive what goes on in the fifth dimension, but look at somebody says, but I can. Look at somebody say, but I can. I can perceive what's happening. We were singing that song today. I want to close with that, with that last verse. Even when I don't see him, he's working. Even when I don't feel it, he's working. I perceive that. He never stops working. Amen? Matthew chapter 13 verse 10 says it. It says, talking about Jesus, and it says, And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest unto them in parables? Jesus was giving a dissertation to the public. Why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered and said unto them, Because it is given, look at somebody said, Because it's given to you. Because you're sitting in church today, it's given to you. It's given to you. To know the mysteries. The, when we say that word mystery, we're not talking about uh, some, something you would see on the show about the witches, what's the, the, the program about the witches, whatever. What we're talking about, the secret plans, the mysterio, the Greek word is mysterio. The, it's given to you to know the secret plans of God. It's given to you to know the secret plans of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, to the world, the reason the physicist said you can't know what's going on in the fifth dimension is because it's not given to them. It's not given to them to know what's going on there. But look at somebody said, but to you it is. That's why a simple handmaid, servant, slave can tell a general, Naaman, that if you were only who has Naaman, the general who has leprosy, if you are only in Israel, there's a man over there that could heal you. A simple slave could tell a general that. And the general says, oh, where? He, he's at the point where I ain't got no other choice. Where is this man? And he goes and sees the prophet. And the pro he comes with, he brings money, silver, gold, everything. Because I'm going to have to pay for this healing. He thinks, I got to pay for this. And all the, the prophet didn't even speak to him. All the prophet said was, tell him to go dip in the Jordan River. Didn't even give him a, 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 a personal audience. Just tell him to go dip in the Jordan River. And he goes and he says, clean the rivers over in Syria where I live. And I thought the prophet was going to come out and wave his hands and put on a big show. But all he said was, go dip. You dip? Go dip. And he was ready to leave because he was insulted. And one of his lieutenants, his probably his chief of, command, chief of staff said, hey, if he told you to go climb the mountain, you climb the highest mountain, you probably would have done that. All he told you to do is go dip. And when he went and dipped, the Bible says he got healed. Only because there was a slave girl there who could perceive what's going on in the fifth dimension. Let me tell you a little bit about the fifth dimension right here, amen? The fifth dimension. But let me first finish reading Matthew chapter 13. It says, For it's given to you to know the kingdom of heaven, but not to them. For whosoever have, I want you to get this now, whosoever have, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But to whosoever have not from him shall be taken away even that he have. Now in our society, we say, that's not fair. But God says, I want you to do something with what I gave you. Amen? If you, if, if you got the gift to play music, you should be bad playing some music. Otherwise, he's going to take it away from you and give it to some. Why is he getting all that? Because he's willing to study and practice. I mean, you know, whatever you got to do, you got to practice. The reason most of us don't progress is because we don't want to practice. You know, military makes you practice, don't they? They make you practice. I used to have this desire when I was in the military. I said, I would love to fly one of those. Back then it was F-14s, but now they're not even rafters anymore, right? They, they didn't move past that. I would love to fly one of, that, one of those, but I said, but I would want to get the keys back to them when the war break out. Here, you can have these keys back. You know, how you, you, you want to drive the car, until they tell you to keep filling the tank up. Yeah, they didn't give your keys back. 
And my, my mother couldn't drive, never could drive, but about cars. But never would learn how to drive. She did a whole lot with her 15 children. <laughs> Y'all can drive. We, I would come into town on leave. Hey, you can use my car. Two days later, he said, no, you can have your car back. Because you calling me every five minutes to take you somewhere. <laughs> And it wasn't that it's because it was winter. No, it wasn't that, I, you know, I would love taking my mother somewhere, but see, my mother thinks like this. She was really political into all the political campaigns and what was going on in the city at the time. And she would go to a meeting and be at a hotel at a meeting, and they didn't have cell phones then or beepers. They didn't have any of that. And she'd call you and say, hey, I'm ready to come home. Come get me. By the time you get there, she didn't got a ride with somebody else. And you walking all over the place. Where's she at? <laughs> looking all over. Hey, did you see the little Miss Lewis here anywhere? And finally you find somebody say, oh, she left 30 minutes ago. And you done drove out here in the middle of the night in winter. <laughs> now you take your car back. <laughs> you got your car. Go we'll drive your car. <laughs> right. to even what you have will be taken away from you. Think about that. Back to dimensions. Back to dimensions. A creature in the fifth dimension possibly could see all things mentioned in the first, second, third, and fourth dimension. Get that now. He can see all, everything going on in the first, second, third, and fourth dimension, but also see things in 360 degrees. Think about that. Wouldn't it be awesome if we could see 360 degrees? I, you know, there's, there's creatures that God's created that gives us an example of that. Uh, if, if you think about a dragonfly, you ever try to squat a dragonfly? They fly like a little helicopter. It looks like a little helicopter hovering. And when you go to squat, it just moves right out the way real quick. That's because it can see 360 degrees. It can see when you raise your hand. Right? It can see that. Think about that. Think about that. The Bible says about heaven in the fifth dimension. It says, in the fifth dimension, it says you can also see like uh, x-rays. You, uh, 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 you, you can see right through. You can see right through everything. If you're in the fifth dimension, you not only can see everything that's going on around you, you can see right through everything also. You can see what the inside of everything. Think about that. We see this in the book of Revelations, and we see it in nature. Like I said, the dragonfly, a chameleon can see 360 degrees. Think about that. John in the Revelations is taken into the fourth dimension and the fifth dimension and shown the history of the church in the book of Revelations. And after which he hears a voice that commands him, come up here. John says he was in the spirit. If you read the book of Revelations chapter one, he says on the Lord's day, he was in the spirit. Now that word spirit is with a capital S, meaning the Holy Spirit. He was praying in tongues in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Spirit, and he heard a voice that says, hey, I'm getting ready to show you Everything that's going to happen with the church. Took him into the fifth dimension and showed him everything that was going to happen with us. He saw you. Revelation chapter 4 verse 1 says, And after which he heard a voice. After which I, this, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. I'm good. A door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it was a trumpet talking with can you imagine a trumpet talking with you a trumpet talking a trumpet talking with me which says come up hither and i will show thee things which must be hereafter revelation chapter 4 verse 2 says and immediately i want you to get this and immediately i was in the spirit now that's with a small s immediately my spirit left my body and was gone. Immediately, he had a, what they call it, near-death experience. He had an out-of-body experience. Immediately, I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. One sat on, get this now, one sat on the throne. Note this now, we're not talking about the Holy Spirit, in as it says in chapter 1, he was in the Holy Spirit on the Lord's day, but now his spirit has just snatched him out of him, his body, and taken him into what they call the ninth dimension. The ninth dimension. I like what it says about the ninth dimension up here. It says, in the ninth dimension, we can compare all the possible universe histories, starting with all the different possible laws of physics and initial conditions. 
All of them. Think about that. In the ninth dimension is where, where Jesus is sitting there saying, this is what we're going to do next. This is what's going to happen in your future. This is, he's showing them, the church is going to come up here. The church is down. You, you, you were just in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I showed you what was happening to the church on earth. But now I'm getting ready to show you what's going to really happen with the church up here in heaven. I'm going to really snatch them away. Amen. How many of you ready to go? Nobody said yes, huh? <laughs> and how they say everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. <laughs> The ninth dimension, Revelation chapter 4, verse 5 and 7 says, And out of the throne, this is what I want you to see this, And out of the throne proceeds lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne. That represents the church. First John sees the church in the outer court. When Jesus gets up and leaves the sanctuary in chapter 1 and 2 and 3, and he goes and sees the church in the outer court, but now he sees seven lamps burning in heaven. Those same lamps that were in the outer court, now he sees them in heaven. And he says, and seven lamps burning before the throne. The church is in heaven now. Don't let nobody tell you we ain't going to be raptured. The church is in heaven now, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst in the middle of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes. Get that now. Four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion and the second beast was like a calf and the third beast had the face of a man and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. Every part of creation is represented. And, but what you want to get is these beasts had eyes all around them and could see everything. You think God don't see what's going on with right now with what's going on in Afghanistan? Pray for our church over there because we have churches in Pakistan. Victory Churches has church in Pakistan and they have ministers, missionaries that they sent into Afghanistan. We want to pray that they get out. We want to pray for them, amen? We want to pray for them. Proverbs chapter 15 verse 3 explains this. It says, the eyes of the Lord are in every place. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the good and beholding the evil and the good. Let's get, get our music team up here when we're ready to close. Beholding the evil and the good. Psalms chapter 34 verse 15 says, gets more into the definition of the, those eyes we've seen on those living creatures. It says, the eyes of the Lord are up on the righteous. And his ears are open unto their cry. To the righteous, God sees everything. But to the righteous, he's listening for what you're going to say. I want you to get that. To the whole world, God sees everything. But to the righteous, he's listening. He wants somebody to cry out, say, hey, Lord, help us. Lord, save us. Lord, deliver us. He's listening to the righteous. Oh, that's great, isn't it? He's listening. He's waiting for you to speak. God is waiting for you. Look at somebody say, stop complaining. And start speaking. He's waiting for you to speak. Uh, uh, there's a woman... Under Elisha, Elijah's replacement, that Elisha said there's going to be another famine. Not the famine that Elijah prophesied, but another famine. And this, the Bible says about this woman, this was a great woman. She was a great woman. And the prophet comes to her, he says, go live in another, you need to pack it up and move. And you know, right, right there, just told me today, my, my, my niece and my cousin, but both in New Orleans, they did leave. She said, I just, my cousin said, I just want to let you know I'm safe. There's another hurricane getting ready to hit here. I'm safe. Right? One of them went to Houston. Well, both of them went to Houston. Right? But I'm safe. But the prophet comes to her and says, you need to pack it up and leave because there's going to be a great famine here. So go surging in another land. And when she left, she lost everything. But when the famine was over, she came back. Get, get this now. She came back. 
when the famine was over, she came back and she had lost everything, all of her land and everything. Don't think, don't think God doesn't respect women. Because where was her husband? Right? But she had lost everything and she comes back and she says, I'm going to go see the king and see if I can get some of my stuff back. At least get my land back. I can start over with that, right? I can start planting some crops or something, right? And when she, guess what? While she's going to see the king and asking for an audience with the king of Israel, Gehazi, the prophet's chief of staff, is, and the, is sitting there with the king. And the king says, tell me some of the miracles that Elijah performed. And while he's sitting there, tell me, he says, well, he, he, ra he raised this woman's son from the dead. And while he's telling the king the story, the woman shows up. <laughs> and, and, and Gehazi said, that, matter of fact, there she is right there. Isn't that, the, isn't that a great way to get an audience when the door is already open for you? The Bible says about John, he says, a door was opened in heaven. Look at somebody say, God opened a door in heaven for you also. That's why I want you to understand that John wasn't physically in heaven. He said he was in the spirit. Now, look at somebody say, it's time for you to get in the spirit. Stop complaining and get in the spirit. You know, we say that all the time, Pastor Drew. That's a Christian lingo right there, right? Brother, you need to get in the spirit. You in the flesh. Am I right? When all hell breaks loose, it's time for you to get in the spirit. Stop cussing people out and get in the spirit. Stop cussing. You know the best way to stop cussing people out is stop praying in tongues? It'll help you not cuss. <laughs> Am I telling the truth? Let me close this up here, right? To the righteous, he's not only wa watching us, he's listening. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we commit this service to you in the words that have been deposited in our heart for us to see in the new dimension, the spiritual dimension, things that you're doing. Lord, disappointments may come, but Lord, you love us. And your word says, what can separate us from the love of God? Neither height nor depth, nor things present or things to come, nor principalities. Nothing can separate us from your love. And because you love us, we know that your word is true. You will not disappoint. You're working everything out for our good, even what we don't see and even what we don't feel. Lord, we just thank you for the testimonies that are coming this week. When we didn't see it, we didn't feel it, we didn't believe it. We even didn't believe it, but you worked it out. Thank you for your hedge of protection. Lord, we ask you to touch Deaconess Darlene's family. This is a devastating time. But we thank you for their lives and their ministry to their family. In Jesus' name. We also thank you, Lord, for our bishop celebrating another birthday and taking him through COVID-19. Come, let's give God a hand. Thank you, Lord, for giving him life and life more abundantly. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Mahalo for tuning in with Pacific Revival Center. If this message touched your spirit, make sure to subscribe and follow us on all our social media accounts to connect with our online family. If you're already a follower, share our content with your family and friends. And if you'd like to support the ministry, click Give Now below. Our mission is to train, equip, and send out armies of believers to minister the gospel to all nations. And together, we can send the love of Christ to all corners of the world. We'll see you next week here at PRC, the place to be.